Hey, 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 everybody. It is I. Fuck me. <laughs> I have a lot of chords happening. And, yeah, I'm just not going to... I'm not going to... I'm just going... Yeah, we're just going to keep going. We're going to power right on through that. Yep, yep. All right. <laughs> so, hey, hey, everybody. It is I, Hope Giselle, and I'm coming at y'all with a damn near what is it like 10 months update i think it's like 10 months now um since i have had srs and i know that y'all have been asking me about this video y'all have wanted updates and things of that nature and i think i'm gonna have to make two of these videos one of them is going to live on my patreon and i will insert the link in the description bar below um and then there will obviously be this one that will live for the public reason being is that in light of recent events, ain't nobody got time for the hateration and the holleration of people who are going to come on here just to watch this video in hopes that I'm going to talk crap about people who have done nothing wrong to me. And even though they may have said some disgusting things about me without actually knowing me as a person, they still haven't done anything wrong to me because until you put your hands on me or threaten my life, I could care less about the videos that you make. But because I know that they're coming, we're just going to have two separate videos so that the people who want further education can get that without other people in the comments being stupid. With that being said, I'm great. I feel great. Everything has been going great. And to get the like main question out of the way, because I know that this is the question that a lot of you all want to know about, whether you've had SRS already or whether you're thinking about having SRS, is what about my sex life? My sex life is awesome. It is thriving. It feels great. Um, and everything is working as it should. So I know a lot of the questions that I have been getting are, do I self-lubricate? Yes, I self-lubricate. I don't have an issue self-lubricating. As long as I am aroused, I will self-lubricate. And that is completely, you know, like normal in that department. Um, I am not having any real like pain anymore when I have sex beyond like certain like pain points. And I just feel like there are times when I prefer a deeper penetration and then there are other times when I prefer a penetration that's like a little bit more shallow. But I would not say that I'm experiencing pain just to be in pain, which is a really, really great thing. Beyond that, I also um, have found myself having a lot less like discharge or whatever it is to like clean up out of my panty liners so in the first video i think i told you all like one of the things that i keep on deck is my panty liners i have to have them and it's mostly just because even before i had srs i was really bad with swamp crotch like i got really bad swamp crotch and if y'all don't know what swamp crotch is it just means that i was really sweaty in the in the the bottom half area of my body well I'm low-key really sweaty everywhere, child. All it takes is for, like, anything over 70 degrees, and I'm, like, pouring buckets because I just, I was an Akadu baby, as my grandma used to say. I was an Akadu baby. My grandma kept the house on 65, 62, child. So anything that's giving a little bit of warmth, hope is drenched in sweat, and especially in that area where it's usually covered up and, you know, all of the things. So I was really worried about, like, sweat and all of that stuff, like, the first couple of months just because I wasn't sure how it was going to handle. Now, granted, my hormones have helped with the idea of how much I sweat, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but I will say that, like, beyond that, there are isn't you know much that they can do to stop my body from kind of like naturally like just producing perspiration in moments where i just feel hot or whatever the case may be so with that being said um i don't have or i'm not experiencing like blood or discharge or anything like that in my painting liners the uh the only thing that comes out now is like basic and regular things to keep everything clean inside there. The common misconception is that neo-vaginas don't self-clean and that they don't, you know, naturally rid themselves of whatever is happening. And they do. Trust and believe me when I tell you that they do. Um, I can always, you know, kind of sort of count on my body to get rid of or do away with things. Um, after a good sexual intercourse moment. Um, and I can also account for my body to like sort of get rid of mucus or whatever the case may be. Like 
Um, when I have gotten sick, like I can also like see the mucus come out down there, which I think is a little bit TMI, but also I think a really great way to kind of like let me know that everything is working and dispelling and doing all of the things. Um, but lately I don't really have anything and it was really funny because I had to like call my mom one day and I was like, I feel like I'm going through panty liners. Like, do I take them off every single time? Like, so it's kind of like having that weird, awkward puberty moment with my mom where it's just like, well, you know, if there's nothing on the panty liner, but it's been touching my parts all day, like, do I need to like, so there was a bunch of stuff that I had to like learn and, and, and get used to as far as that stuff is concerned. But, um, Beyond that, depth retention is a thing for me. Um, beyond that, like I said, depth retention is a, is a huge thing for me that I was a little worried about just because I want to have enjoyable sexual experiences and I wanted to be able to like withstand the full length and girth of my partner, which I can say successfully that at 10 months I am now doing um, and that feels great and it feels amazing, not just like the actual sensation, but like the feeling of knowing that I can. Um, but I will say uh, as a caveat, for me in particular, I wasn't necessarily a super sexual person before um, SRS surgery and I wasn't necessarily a super sexual person um, before I even started to identify as trans. I would have my moments, I have like my like ready to go days or like my ready to go like couple of hours. But then like if I either did not have sex or if I, you know, didn't get what I needed within the time frame, I would either just like masturbate or the, the feeling would just go away. And I think that after SRS, it's a little bit worse because I don't really think about sex for real. Um, there are moments where my body is just like ready to go and it's up and it wants to do the things. But for the most part, I can probably go an entire month and not be touched and be perfectly fine. And it's just because I wasn't already like a super ridiculously sexual person to begin with. And now that I think a large part of like the testosterone is gone and all of that stuff is happening, I'm really just not the most sexual person at all. And this is one of the things that I don't think a lot of people talk to you about when we are having this conversation around SRS and like what happens and what ways your body changes and moves afterwards. Um, I have been having mood swings and I do have mood swings now um, a lot more frequently in a space of like just kind of sort of being aloof and sort of like away. I don't want to say down because I don't be depressed, but like there are moments where I'm just like, I kind of want to disconnect and it'll come out of nowhere. Like I'll be fine one minute and then the next minute, like my body will just be like, eh, we're not feeling today anymore. And like all of my feelings will just go head first into whatever the fuck, like whichever one of my little like inklings up in, in my brain started that trend, the rest of my body is like, oh, okay, the brain had for it to say, we done for today. My heart, all of my intuition, everything else is just like, okay, so we're also clocking out. We'll see you tomorrow. And um, that's a new thing for me is because like usually I'm able to circumvent that by just like kind of sort of doing one of my favorite things or listening to music or finding something to watch real quick or calling up a friend. And these days that doesn't work because I don't want to talk. Like when I get into those moods, um, it's very rare that anybody outside my boyfriend can like actually talk to me but if he ain't home child is just giving very much so today is a wash we'll try again tomorrow like kind of vibes like that's just what it's on so now that we have gotten the like the sex stuff out of the way I think maybe for the most part we might have to come back to some stuff I can talk to y'all a little bit just about like the healing process and like the aesthetic process of everything um I think aesthetically I'm really happy with the way, with the way that she's looking down there. Um, I will say that even though like I'm 10 months in, there is still like one little patch. Like it's almost like a cute little like inverted like beauty mark where it's just like this small little circle that still has like um, some discoloration. It hasn't picked up the pigment of my skin just yet. And that's kind of like a bother, but it's literally just like one little like little dot on the side of like one of my labial folds. That's like, it's like this one little dot that's like still pink. Um, 
But beyond that, everything else like looks and feels like a dream. I know that some of y'all are going to ask questions like, can you get a wax? Like, can you da 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 da? And all of that stuff. And I was a little afraid, y'all. I'm not gonna lie because I got my wax for, oh, I got my first wax for my birthday. Now, mind you, I never was a waxer before this and not because, you know, I was ashamed with like the whole penis thing, just because waxing be hurting. OK. And then I'm also very weird about people being in my private area. And so it's just one of those things where like I don't I don't like people just all up in my private area. And especially when we're talking about a private area that's still kind of like lightweight healing and stuff like that. But I got the clearance from my doctor. And just like from some of my trans homegirls that were just like, bitch, you can go ahead and get this little, you know, little munch crunch, you know, wax and whatever. And so I went to go get wax and all of that stuff was cool. And to be perfectly honest with you, I have a lot of feeling in a bunch of different places, but I was very happy that on like the labial folds, like my lips and stuff, I don't have any feeling. So when she went to ripping like the two sides that are supposed to hurt the most, like she was like, oh, you know, like I'm about to da 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 da. This is your first time, girl. So like, you know, let me know like if I need to go a little bit different with the second side or whatever. But the thing that was so beautiful about it was I couldn't feel it because like there's still tissue that is healing and all that good jazz. So I really couldn't feel it. I felt everything like I felt all of the pubic muscle or, or the pubic bone hair, all of that stuff. I felt like the inner thigh hair. And of course, I felt when she got that little butt crack, you know, piece. But when it came down to like the uh, like the the lips like the outside of the lips you know getting that cute little part done i didn't feel a thing and and to be perfectly honest with you um i'm usually a nair person in, in my private areas but i think that waxing is going to like maybe sort of be a thing that i splurge on every now and then when there's like a specific thing happening because that hair is just growing back y'all like I got it done end of July because my birthday, we were technically leaving a little later than my birthday. And so I got it done like end of July. My birthday was August the 2nd and we were leaving on August the 3rd. And so, I mean, August the 4th. So what I did not want to do was have a bunch of like appointments and things lined up or anything that was gonna mess up my plans. So I was like, okay, we're just gonna knock this out of the ballpark. So I got my wax done end of July. I am just now even considering the thought of getting another wax and it's October, right? And we're like second week of October, I believe. So that should let you know how good the wax works. But also I'm not generally a hairy person. I have to let my hair build up like to the point where I can like feel it and see it before I even give a shit about hair happening because until I notice it, I don't notice it, if that makes sense. And so when it comes down to like hair down there, it grows now like a lot more fine, like hormones I think have helped with that. Like, so my hair down there doesn't grow as coarse. It's not like, you know, super rough or rugged feeling. It's very like fine and it almost feels like, you know, um, back in the day when the old people used to say like, oh, it, you fine as frog hair. And it's because frogs really don't have no hair, but some of them do. And when they do, it's like very fine and slick. Um, and so, like, it would be one of those things where, like, when it grows back now, it's so fine and so thin that it doesn't bother me. And honestly, this is just my little tidbit about it, y'all. I don't like grown people that ain't got pubic hair. I'm sorry. All of this, like, swimmer's penis and all of the extra extra with, like, the, the coochie got to be bald. Like, I'm not a fan of that. I feel like as adults or, like, as grown people, like, that's a part of the rite of passage. And then also, I enjoy the way that, like, men smell, like, the natural, like, scent and all of that stuff down there. And I feel like when you take away the hair, it also takes away a little bit of that, like, musk. And there's a difference between musk and must, right? There is difference, right? When somebody is musty, somebody is usually stank. When somebody has like a musk to them, it's not necessarily stank. It's just like, a, you know, like their, their, their body odor got a little something to it, right? But there are very different, you know, reasons for why we say like, oh, this has a musk to it and this is a musty ass person. And I feel like if you a grown ass adult out here, like, 
have something going on. Like, don't get me wrong. She was cute when she was bald and all of that, that jazz and that jism. But it's not something that I make a requirement for myself. As long as when I put my bikini on, it's not a bush hanging out the sides. I could care less about everything else, to be perfectly honest with you. And the only reason I care about the bush on the side is for aesthetic purposes, for like taking pictures and things like that. I just feel like to me and for me and only me, I don't like the idea of having on a bomb ass bikini, a bomb ass bathing suit, and you got little curly cues popping out the side of your glitter ass baby. Like that, that to me is just not cute for the aesthetic principle. But as it pertains to like just being an adult and doing what the fuck you want to do with your body, I don't feel like anybody should be forced into a space where they have to shave. And I say anybody because it's not just the men, right? I've seen plenty of men have this conversation where they're just like, oh, you know, I need that coochie to be bald. I need that da 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 to be whatever. But I've also seen women lately having the conversation about how they need men to shave and how they need men to be hairless and all of this and that and how I don't want to be sucking no dick either, you know, that got hair on it and all this and that. And I feel like, honestly, that to me feels like more of a y'all did it to us, so we finna do it to y'all thing. Because when I was growing up, all of the women in the films that I knew loved a good hairy man like all of the women in the films that i motherfucking knew like couldn't wait to have a man with a hairy back and loved when a man had the happy trail and all of that good stuff because you just knew there was something about a bush that made you feel like a man was gonna take you up and through there you know what i'm saying and i feel like this whole newfound wave of women being on that like Oh, like, I don't like a man with hairy nuts and I don't want a man to have all this hair down there, whatever the case may be. It's really just a game of get back. And I really wish that as adults we would stop playing this game like we don't have hair on our private parts. But that's a whole nother video that I could get into, as y'all can see, because I'd be passionate about that shit. It's something about it that irks me when I see adults with no fucking hair on their penis or no hair on their vagina. It's a whole thing. I'm just kind of like... I've, and especially like when you already like if you're a person and especially like if you're a femme person or a woman or a, a, a trans person who presents in a feminine way and you dainty as hell, you super small and then you got the nerve to be bald down there. It just would remind me of a child. I don't want to be reminded of a child when I'm thinking about having sex. If you're a man who's a little bit below average or has an average penis and an average build on your body. If you hairless, it just reminds me of like growing up with my little brother and him like running out of the bathroom and thinking that it was funny. Like there's nothing that's really sexy about that to me. There was always something like super sexy to me when I was growing up about the ability to grow like secondary, secondary sex characteristics as it pertained to hair and all of that stuff. And I just feel like if we could get back to a space where there's like a healthy medium between like Bushwick and a little something something to get everything going that would make me happy but once again separate video just know that by month eight or so you can go ahead and get waxed and it's not gonna be a big issue um when we talk about like how i deal with um because i know some people were asking me different things about like how I feel when I get dressed and stuff now and like has it changed and affected the way that I wear clothes? Absolutely. Not necessarily in the way, like in the styles of clothes that I, I pick because I've always picked like sort of the same sort of styles. I have things that I like. I love flowy things. I love anything made out of chiffon, bitch. If it's made out of chiffon and it's, you know, it has a nice little shape to it, you can bet your bottom dollar that Hope wants it in her closet because I love things that flow. I love a good mesh and I love anything that makes me just feel ethereal and fairy-like and all that stuff. So none of that stuff has changed, but I do definitely know that I tend to wear a lot more, um... I tend to wear a lot more like my legging outfits and um, like body suits and things of that nature that I would like that I used to want to wear so badly. I wear them just like proudly and openly now. Um, I had this Ivy Park. Um, I had this Ivy Park white like bodysuit number from the Icy Park collection that I never wore just because it was so tight. It was so body form fitting that outside of pictures where I could like tuck and like make sure nothing was moving and it was just like a moment in time or whatever the case may be um outside of that I was just uncomfortable wearing it because I was like 
things are going to shift and move. And like, what if somebody sees it and then it's white and da, 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 and all of this stuff. And so now having had bottom surgery, I felt so cute and so sexy and so fine in that thing. It don't make no sense. And then also, I feel like it's also a way to kind of sort of prevent like a bunch of BS from happening. I think that after you have SRS, like it's so much easier to just maneuver the world and maneuver space. Um, because I think a lot of people will try to use that as a means to degrade you and make you feel bad. And when you don't have it anymore, even though it does not change the fact that you are still transgender, it makes you feel a lot more affirmed to be able to walk away from people, pay people dust, or just like legitimately like counteract people's bad thought processing behind transgender people. This idea that none of us have the means to get it or none of us want it or this means that we're still trying to hold on to male privilege while looking like women through keeping our penises. Like there, there's so many like misconceptions and, and thoughts that are absolutely wrong as it pertains to trans women specifically in our bodies. Um, and so having the surgery has helped me to one, like kind of step into that space of like wearing some of the outfits that I love um, without shame or without, you know, having to feel like I need another extra piece that doesn't even belong on the outfit so that I can feel like, you know, whatever. And then it also kills the pain of having to fucking tuck. Like when you want to wear certain things, having to tuck is the vein of your existence. And if you've never had to tuck, and I'm not talking about like some fake, like, oh, let me try to see what these trans people are really bitching about. I'm talking about like really tucking for 12 hours of your day at work in a pair of jeans, like readjusting it all day to make sure that nobody is peeping. It's crazy. And the thing about it that's so interesting to me is that, and one of the things that I love about SRS now is that I noticed that when people know that you're trans, it's already rude to me and it's already kind of like, uh, and, and a little disgusting. The way that people call trans folks like pedophiles and sexual deviants and all of this stuff. But when a person knows that you're trans, they spend all day looking at your crotch is disgusting to me and you only know about that if you're trans or if you're a person who's willing to be honest and be like yeah I'm curious about it like I'm not gonna lie I've done that but that shit is weird as fuck whenever a person knows that I'm transgender and I have on a pair of jeans a pair of pants a pair of leggings or any form-fitting bottoms the first and the only thing that I catch them doing for majority of the conversation especially if they're a new person who has never either met me in person or if this is their first time meeting me is I find that they stare at my crotch a lot right they stare at my crotch they try to figure it out they're trying to see if they can see a bulge they're trying to see something and to me beyond the fact of it just being none of your motherfucking business it's also like a disgusting thing to do like if I just stood and stared at your crotch because I was curious to see if you had a huge penis you would feel some type of way you would feel violated because one I'm trans and I shouldn't be doing that because you for some reason me being trans absolves me me of having attractions to anybody but then number two you would feel some type of way because you're a human being and you would like me to not treat you like a piece of meat by staring at your print or trying to find your print through your pants while you're having a conversation but far too often do I see people do this and far too often have I seen people do this in the past where I'll be having a very like open and genuine conversation with them and the only thing that they can do is stare at my crotch I also hate like when I'm in spaces where it is bathing suit season or it is like whatever season or we're at a sleepover at a hotel and, you know, we decide we all want to go get in the pool. And it would just be one of those things where, like, if you're with the girls or if you're with a group of people and they know T, they want to see, like, how this bathing suit is operating, you know, for you to be able to get in the water successfully like they do. And a lot of them spend the entire time at the beach, at the pool, at the whatever, looking to see if they can see it. And with SRS, I will say, like, that... Like, not having that feeling is so, like, fulfilling. And then also, like, I'm not going to lie. It is a little bit of a slight, like, okay, bitch, get out my coochie. When, you know, you can kind of just, like, walk around freely and you don't have to worry about whether or not your tuck is going to slip. And you don't have to worry about whether or not they're going to peep the contraption that you have to hold everything in place. Because they shouldn't be just staring at your crotch anyway. But 
I that that's one of the things that I, I I'm I'm gonna absolutely say outside of like being able to comfortably dress, I will say that I am just so happy that I'm able to comfortably just kind of sort of maneuver and and walk around and walk through because people don't understand how invasive that stuff is and they don't do that to their regular friends. They don't do that shit to people who aren't trans. Like people don't walk up to other people who aren't trans and ask them about their genitals just because. People don't open up conversations or have like beginning conversations conversations with people who aren't trans about their sexual, you know, whatever, at least not in regular degular settings, right? I'm not going to say people don't do that, but not in regular degular settings. People are not just out here being like, oh, so how you be sucking and how you be fucking and how you be da 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 Like nobody does that. But with trans people, for some reason, it's like folks act as if we don't have the autonomy to have some sense of privacy around our sex lives. And majority of it is because everybody is under the impression that every trans person that they meet is a sex worker. And while a lot of the girls do engage in sex work and while a lot of the girls are trying to survive by any means necessary, in the age of 2022, when there's a lot more room and there's a lot more space for us to just, just kind of thrive and be ourselves and, and do all of the great things that we do, those professions, as it pertains to them being the only way that trans women and trans people in general or, or, or queer LGBTQIA plus people in general can survive are no longer just the will in the way. They are options, right? But they are not just the will in the way. So the idea that you know, it's okay to talk to a trans person, specifically trans women, about how we have sex because the assumption is that we're sex workers or that, you know, we're just so open about talking about sex all the time is bullshit. Like, either, some of y'all have friends that are strippers and y'all don't talk to them nearly as much about sex as y'all do when you meet a trans person or when you meet a queer person. And that's got to stop. And I think that a large part of SRS being important for me was because it did help it to stop. A large part of that being important for me was because it did kind of help it to change the conversation and shift the conversation in a way that I can be happy with, right? Like I can have this conversation with you. I can be okay in this conversation with you. And because you know that I don't, you're not going to really ask as many questions about my sex life as you would ask questions just in general about like how I'm enjoying or whatever the case may be. Um, and oftentimes people are just so surprised that you even were able to get the sex change that they find themselves asking a different set of questions. So I don't know. There's a bunch of different nuances to this that I think we could all get into and jump into at any point in time. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to say that clothes and all that stuff kind of all intrinsically work themselves out in that topic for me. And that's how I feel about it. Um, when it comes to how um, like my friends and my family and everybody received it, I had a lot of friends that did not want me to get bottom surgery like most of my friends if i'm being completely honest and i'm not talking about people that i associate with i'm talking about like people that i legitimately consider to be like my friends i think i had like a friend that was like yes bitch i'm so happy for you like get that shit get that shit do your big one right the rest of my friends were just sort of like mm, if that makes you happy, right? Like the rest of my friends were just like, mm, if that makes you happy. And these are the people that I hang around with because I don't like when people are just yes men, amen, I'm in your corner just for the sake of being in your corner ass people because I can't trust you. So having like my trusted friends and my trusted people be like, I don't know if this is the right thing, but I'm going to support you if this is what you need. That's really important to me. And I think that over the last 10 months, it's been really like amazing to see people who weren't necessarily in support, um, but support me so much still be like, are you okay? Are you good? How is everything healing? Like my friends still like occasionally will ask me like, how was everything going for me? And like, they really put me in a healthy space of feeling good about my decision. Not that I, you know, needed that or wanted that or like was requesting that from anybody. But my friends put me in a space of like really just feeling good about my decision and making me feel confident right with the ability i have to be able to make whatever other decision that i might make in the future should that be something that i want to do now at 10 months in y'all i can only tell y'all 
that I am always discovering. I'm always finding out something new. I'm always like fiddling and faddling down there to figure out what works, what doesn't work. I've tried different products um, as far as like cleaning is concerned. I was working with Summer's Eve and that's okay. Like it didn't irritate me, but I also started to use um, Honey Pot. And what I will say, no tea, no shade to the Honey Pot brand, but that Honey Pot wash does kind of dry me out. And I've noticed a little bit of a difference um, because when I use my Summer's Eve, like everything kind of feels juicy and moist all the time. And like, you know, I like the way that that works. When I use Honey Pot, I feel like I be dry. Like I, I, I just feel like I'm inherently like more like dry. Like it's just, it's not giving wop wop when I use the Honey Pot wash. But I love the Honey Pot wipes and I love the Honey Pot um, panty spray. And I love the Honey Pot wipes because for me, I am a really big stickler about smell. I do not like it when I smell. I don't like to smell like anything other than a good perfume or a good oil. And so the second that I get to smelling things that are not like that, I have an issue. And I am just very precautious. And there are some times where like, you know, I'll go through half of the day and I feel like I might smell a faint little scent of something. And it, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's urine. I don't know whether it's like dish. I don't know what, I don't know what, what it is, but I don't like it. And so like the honey pot wipes will, um, well, you know, like as soon as I, I hit the wipe with that, it's like a fresh new little shower, like a quick little shower moment and I can go through my day. I also like the panty spray. Now, I know this is going to sound funny to some of y'all, but to some of y'all, y'all going to get it. Once again, those that get it, get it. Those that don't, don't. Um, and so for those of you all who understand what I mean, y'all will know that the panty spray smells like a sneeze right like when you spray it the panty spray smells like a sneeze and it's just not something that i fuck with <laughs> but the overall scent like of anything that you have going on with your panties goes away right so you spray it and then you kind of just like let your panties air dry while you're like using the bathroom or peeing or whatever you got going on and by the time you know like you spray i, I usually hit it like three times like skirt 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 you know and then like i'll you know flap my panties a little bit like just kind of like flap them and once they're done or once I'm done with the bathroom and I pull everything back up, everything is just fresh and new. And it doesn't have like this, like, ooh, summer, you know, vanilla bean smell. It's like, it just smells like fabric again. And I really appreciate that because I never want to like, go to the bathroom and use it or like go freshen up somewhere and have a person just like know that I freshened up. Like, you know, like I've seen TikTok videos. I saw one TikTok video in particular where this guy got this girl together because she used his hand soap on her cooch before they had sex because I guess she was embarrassed to say that she just wanted to freshen up or I, but there's a thousand and one reasons why, you know, as women, we just, we don't say anything, you know, like you don't want to be just, whatever the case may be. And so this young lady chose to use his hand soap that was in the bathroom, but the hand soap had a very distinct scent to it. So when she pulled her panties down and all he smelled was the pomegranate hand soap, he automatically knew what happened and I feel like with the honey pot panty spray you get that refresher I feel like with a honey pot wipes you get those refreshers without a person knowing that you went in the bathroom and fresh I feel like even with baby wipes you get that baby wipey like smell and so a person just kind of knows that that's what you went to the bathroom to go do whereas when you use the honey pot wipes and that panty spray, it just kind of smells like, oh, okay, she ain't got no smell down here. She don't have no whatever. And then with the wipe, you know, like there's no taste of the wipe left behind. I know because I've asked, right? Like there's no taste of the wipe left behind and all of that stuff because I'm very, very nitpicky. I don't want my boyfriend going anywhere near it if I feel like I smell like spontaneous sex is not necessarily the best sex for me because I just, I never want to be that person that busts it open and shit just is not right. I'm really big on like hygiene and taking the showers and oiling up and coconut oiling and all of that stuff. But at the same time, I also just want to make sure 
that I'm sure of when I'm sure, you know, of what I'm sure of. And so those are things that like I will say have worked as far as products that I use to kind of, kind of sort of keep everything clean um, and all of that jazz. So while I will say that the Honey Pot wash was not for me, I feel like it makes me dry. The Honey Pot wipes and the Honey Pot, um, the Honey Pot wipes and the Honey Pot uh, panty spray, I swear by them. Also, Honey Pot has this, um, these little babies here, and these are the urinary tract support, um, for vaginal health supplement. And what I will say is y'all, I have a really bad issue with holding my pee. Like I'm really bad. At it. I'm really bad with it. Like if I can, especially in the morning, like if I can get those last little 15 minutes of shut eye, lay down, whatever, I will hold my pee until I can't hold it no more. Like not even really being able to enjoy the little 15 minute lay down that I'm trying to get because I have to pee so damn bad, but I'm working on it. Um, and I also think that like taking these little supplements has really helped, um, with that, like, I noticed that like since I've been taking them, I don't have that like run to the bathroom UTI sort of feeling um, as much. Like I'm able to go to the bathroom a lot more. I drink, um, I try to drink as much water as I can take. I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I drink 17 gallons of water a day. That's just not my ministry. But I do try to drink things like cranberry juice or like pineapple juice or things that are known to just kind of sort of like clean out the, you know, whatever. Um, but I do make sure I have some water every single day. Like I don't go through the day without water. I am definitely a sparkling water person and all that jazz. And it's amazing. The only time that I smell myself through my urine is when I've had like a crazy weekend or like I went crazy on the mimosas at brunch. I'm not really a big like get drunk, get bucked up person, but every now and then, like I enjoy myself. Like for my birthday, I enjoyed myself, bitch. I had all of the rum that, that, that the Bahamas was willing to give me, bitch. I had all of the rum that the Bahamas was willing to give me, okay? And so um, with that being said, uh, when I came back and I started to take these, like that, those first couple of, you know, times when I used the bathroom, it was giving pungent, it was giving alcohol is coming up out of the system. Um, but I started to take these and I don't have any problem with like the scent of my pee or the color of my pee or whatever. And I'm not sure what, what honey pot put in these. Um, but I'll link them in the description box below. Um, and if I forget, charge it to my head and not my heart, just remind me and I'll put it there. But those are some of the products that I use for all the things that she got going on down there. If there's anything that I missed or if there's anything that y'all want to know as far as like updates are going and how everything is happening and how I'm taking care of stuff, please feel free to write the comments in the comment below and I will get to them. I will get to everybody and all that jazz. I just wanted to make sure that I came and gave y'all this update because y'all have been asking me for it for a while and I have been neglecting y'all. I know. I understand. Okay. I know I've been bad, but I keep telling y'all I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not an influencer. I'm a person with influence and I do this when I can. So with that being said, love y'all much. Thank y'all so much. And until next time, peace, love, and hope and keep the haters so far away from you that you can barely hear what they got to say. Bye everybody.